My name is Patsy Hollings and I live near Leeds in Yorkshire. We've had Vimeranas since 1976 and are the top kennel in Vimeranas in the UK. We have written books on the breed and we are passionate about the breed. It's our one breed of a lifetime. We started with the breed in 1976. We show them. Through showing dogs it has given me an amazing life. I judge dogs all over the world. We have seven Vimeranas and two Norfolk Terriers. The Vimeranas we have are mostly girls and they range from being six years to four months. Vimeranas are a medium to large breed. They're smooth coated, very athletic, silver grey, a varying shades, row grey through to mouse grey. There is now a blue grey which is not acceptable colour. They weigh about 30 kilos. Generally not a breed that are prone to getting heavy or overweight. Very athletic, like exercise, love humans, very people dogs. They are nicknamed the Grey Ghost and this is what they are. They will follow you about wherever you go if you allow it. The height of a Vimarana, the bitch would be between 22 and 25 and the dog between 24 and 27. So you're going to get a bigger animal in a dog than you are in a bitch. They will take on your personality, so if you are very excitable, you will have a very excitable Vimeron. If you're stressed, you're going to stress him. So a calm, sensible, black and white attitude will give him a confident, sensible look, outlook on life. And he will be your best companion in the world. Weimaraners are German dogs. They come from the Weimar Republic in Eastern Germany. They are bred to hunt and stalk wild boar, deer, raccoon. So they are a very strong, determined breed. They have to be protective of their owner because wild boar is very agile and very dangerous. So consequently, they are a very quick thinking dog who need to make the right decision. Otherwise, they're in danger of not evolving at all. They are primarily a gun dog, so it's not a guard dog, but they would protect you if they needed to. Very calmly and very intuitive in the way they think. They're not a silly breed if they're brought up properly. And they're not an aggressive breed. They weigh a situation up and decide how do I need to deal with this situation. And they will do that with great knowledge and intelligence. Vimeran is a very people dogs. People often say they're a one man dog. But they're not particularly. I think they're very good family dogs. They're very good with children but obviously you would never leave a child and a dog unattended together. But they are not aggressive with children. They are very intuitive. They're not a noisy dog. They only bark if there's a very good reason. If you have a pack of Vimeranas that are not used to a cat, then the cat, if entered their domain, would probably end up very sore at the very least. However, if the puppy is brought into an environment where you have a cat, you must be aware that the cat is more dangerous to the puppy because it could scratch it. And they will grow up and be best friends. We once had a gentleman take a Vimerana who bred pigeons. And the pigeons used to sit on the Vimerana's back in the sun and just hang out. But if a cat came in the garden, that was fair game for the Vimerana. They are a hunting dog. We must remember that. But they are good with other dogs. Again, if they're brought up with them. But it's not wise to go in the park and allow your puppy to walk up to another dog. That dog may not be friendly, in which case your Vimerana will recognise that fact the next time and think, I will get him first. So always say, is your dog friendly? That gives good ruling to the dogs and he won't go up aggressively to other dogs because he's never been treated aggressively. However, he is nobody's fool and if somebody does attack him the next time he sees them, he will get him first, very probably. Vimeranas love to be with you. They're extremely affectionate, but they're not the sort of dog that has to climb on top of you. They're quite happy to be alongside you. They love to go with you. Generally, they will get in the car and be happy to go with you rather than stay at home on their own. 
However, an indoor kennel is a good idea. Get him used to it and then he'll be happy to go in there when you leave him. Puppies need a lot of sleep. So giving him time out in his crate where he's safe, where he can't damage himself, if you're out for two or three hours at a time, he will be absolutely fine. You don't want to be with puppy all day, every day. So don't feel that if you're working part time, you can't leave the puppy. It's healthy to do that. It does need its own space. And so if your puppy is brought up to be left for two or three hours at a time, it's perfectly acceptable that you can leave the adult dog for two or three hours at a time. I don't think that anybody would leave the dog full time seven days a week. But if you have to work and you're prepared to day board that dog for a while, for two or three days a week, then I think that's acceptable. It gives them a different perspective and it's not unhealthy for the dog. You can have a dog if you work. Just be mindful of how long you're going to leave that dog. A Vimarana within the family unit is a perfect companion. He doesn't actually need another dog because he's a very person dog. So he's quite happy as a single dog. People suggest that dogs should have four or five hours of running every day. That's not what we dogs do these days. You know, as long as they're stimulated mentally and physically and have perhaps two or three hours a day of running and playing and interacting in that respect, and the rest of the time they will hang out with you quite happily. We do need exercise. He's a big athletic breed, so you need somebody who's prepared to get out there and go walking with him and enjoying him for at least two or three hours a day. Other than that, he will be quite happy to hang out with you. To have a Vimarana and to let it run over the moors is just a wonderful sight, and that's what you want from your dog. Early training, off the lead in the garden before he can go out following vaccinations, that will get him used to coming back to his name. Then when you take him in the park and let him go, you call him back and give him a biscuit so he knows that you've got to come back when you're called. And nothing is a greater sight than to see a Vimarana galloping over the hills. It's a wonderful sight. They're a beautiful dog. They're athletic and they're free and that's what we have dogs for. You will get so much out of that exercise together and you are never going to wear a Vimarana out. And they're very, very trainable if you are the right temperament, but you must be calm. And if you're calm and determined and stubborn, then, you, then they will show you respect. So they can be very, very good. Um, but if they're bad, they're even better. So you need to do your training right from the beginning. Start as you mean to go on. Give them clear guidelines. Any training is best done through reward and absolutely not through noise or stress or smacking. Puppies hate being ignored. Adult dogs hate being ignored. If they're naughty and you ignore them, that hurts them far more than if you would hit them, which you wouldn't do anyway. Basically, a reward and a praise will always get the results. So you're going to have a dog that's very nicely trained if you do the job properly. They are very active. They do need training from the beginning. If you never let your puppy off the lead and never train him to come back to his name, then he's going to run off wildly and it's going to be hard to catch him because he's so quick moving and quick thinking. So that training is done from day one. From day one, positive training with a treat is always a good thing. And puppies learn very quickly. Vimaranas are not the sort of breed that you would give the proverbial toilet roll to for six months and then start training. You would have lost the plot altogether if you do that. It's not a dog that's going to sit on your lap unless you want a great big athletic dog on your lap or in your bed when it's grown up. So don't start something you can't finish. Do think, okay I want to cuddle my dog but I don't want it on the furniture. Then sit on the floor and cuddle your dog. That way he never learns to come onto the furniture and never has to be taught to get off the furniture. Vimeranas are very good at doing what you want to do. And if you've got treats, that helps enormously with any dog. But this is not a breed that is prone to putting on weight because it's a breed that's athletic anyway in its nature. They do think for themselves, so consequently are not the most apt at obedience where it is repetitive 
because once they know it, they want stretching. So something like agility is fantastic. They love it, it's stimulating, and it gives them something to do. And they do want to please you, as long as it isn't too repetitive where they get bored. They are like your very intelligent child. Stimulate them and they'll give of their best. Over, over repetitive action or under stimulation is just going to get them so wound up they're going to get naughty. So it's, it's using their brain and using their physical abilities. So things like dog showing, is, they love it because they're with you and you're working as a team and you're both at it. Agility, fantastic, they love it. Working tests where you go out and there's a false trail put down and they follow it, they love that as well. Anything that stimulates them. Think of a Vimarana as being an intelligent child that needs stimulation and if it doesn't get it, it will get up to mischief because that's your Vimarana. We always think that the best toys to give Vimaranas are the big strong ones, the nylon bones. We don't give cow hooves because Vimaranas do everything to the best of their ability. So if they chew the cow hoof and it gets to a small part, they may swallow it. We don't give fluffy toys with squeaks because they will literally destroy them. So anything that is robust, and they may be the expensive ones, but they are gonna last a lifetime. Vimeronas come in two types. There is the short hair and the long hair. The long hair doesn't have an excessively long coat that's going to mat like something like a Spaniel or an Afghan hound. It has two inches of coat and feathering, which you might trim round the ears and the feet for cleanliness. It's not difficult to look after. You can brush it through quite easily. The short hair doesn't have an undercoat, so you don't have a major hair problem. It's not like a double-coated breed where the undercoat comes out like a mat. And the hair being grey is quite soft, so it's not going to stick to your clothes like a white-haired dog. They don't melt dramatically, so you're not going to have that massive influx of hair all over your house. Often people will walk in my kitchen and say, oh, your floor is so clean. But when you brush it, you will find that there is quite a lot of hair, but it's just not noticeable because it's such a fine, soft hair that it doesn't stick. The best way of grooming is with a rubber glove, either a rubber glove you buy at the supermarket or the specific rubber mitten, which will have nobbles on, which is stimulating the circulation as well as grooming out the dead hair. They can melt, and sometimes the first year, if they melt dramatically, it can look as if there are raindrops on their back. But it, they're a quite an easy breed to look after coat-wise because they don't have any sort of problems with undercoat or even dirt. They do dry off and it brushes off quite easily. Bathing them, maybe a puppy initially you might bath when you open the crate in the morning and there's a bit of a mess, but as they get older, you would do it for your own benefit, really, if you think they've been rolling in something. But it's not something you would need to do every, every week, certainly. Vimeranas are a very healthy breed. They do not suffer from a great deal of problems. We do the required health testing through the Kennel Club, which is just hip x-raying for hip dysplasia is not a big problem in Vimeranas. The breed average for hip scoring is round about 14, so it's a quite a low one. I think the main problem Vimeranas may suffer is cuts and scratches because they don't have an undercoat and they're quite hardy and will go into undergrowth, so they may catch their ear and of course if you catch an ear it's going to bleed for England, but it's not something that's going to be dangerous. There is a condition called gastric torsion, which can affect many breeds and is not peculiar to Vimeranas. Nobody knows why it occurs, but what happens is the stomach fills with gas and then, of course, can twist. If you had a balloon and you pulled a balloon full of water, it would spin, and that's what happens to the stomach. Being a deep-chested, long-backed dog, it can occur in a Vimerana. It's not something that you need to be dramatically aware of because it's not something that happens dramatically often. However, 
we do feel there may be a stress element involved so if the dog's excited and eats and is dramatic it could work a bit like a colic would in a horse so we wouldn't over exercise before or after a meal for an hour each outside and we would always feed ultimately two meals puppies would get more meals of course but ultimately the adult dog would always have two meals they don't have eye problems touch wood or heart problems they're a very very healthy breed and they're also a dual purpose breed so the breed that you would show would be the breed that you would work or do agility with we don't have different types as perhaps you would have with say a setter or a spaniel where you would have a show type and a working type the breed that you have is the breed that you have and you can do with it what you like and quite frankly the Weimaraner will work if that is your ilk and if it's got the temperament that it wants to show then you can both enjoy a lovely time showing if you want to do agility he wants to please you he will do it he's there for you to work with and kindly, respectfully enjoy a long happy life together. I think it is always wise to go see a breeder and then you can listen to their passion. They will know the idiosyncrasies of the breed and be able to help you make the right decision as to if it's the breed for you. Go and talk to breeders, make sure that that person with that breed has a genuine passion. They will be able to help you and they will be there to support you. Go to somebody who does something with that breed other than just breeds it. Go to somebody who either shows it and has a passion for it, works it in the field and has a passion for it, hunts with it, does agility, does obedience because they're the people who love this breed and want to help you. They're the people who are going to be there for you when you need them in six weeks time, six months time, six years time. They're going to always be there for you because they have such a passion for that breed that they want to do the best for the breed. And to do the best for the breed is finding the right owner for their puppies. That is their priority. It's not about money, it's about finding the right owner so that the new family and the new puppy will lead a long, happy and fulfilled life together because they know what they're taking on and they have support to help them in those times when they have a niggly little doubt, which we all have. Vimeronas for us are the most amazing breed in the world. They suit our personality absolutely down the line. We're stoic Yorkshire folk and these are stoic German dogs and we blend together so very well. I never envisage life without a Weimaraner. They're so want to be with you without question. There's no hidden extras. They love you for who you are. And that's so rewarding. And I imagine that when I'm 84, I would have to say, I must have a Weimaraner. I can't possibly live without them. You know, Weimaraners are the sort of breed that we get them through rescue that people have just bought off the shelf and at two years old are just lunatics because they haven't been trained properly. And they come in to rescue and somebody knowledgeable takes that two-year-old hooligan and instantly that dog knows exactly where it's at. And they never have the problems that were there before. And it just amazes me that it's a breed that you can do that with. That somebody can get this dog that came to us because it chewed and it growled and it was badly behaved and it goes to a knowledgeable home and never do they see those problems. They are so intuitive, they know exactly what to do and exactly who to respect. And it's such a trait that is amazing and it's, it's something that has endured us to the breed dramatically. We love farm runners and would never be without them even when I'm 84.